Hello and welcome. As you can tell by the title, I'm the Obsessed Movie Man. OMM. Um, well, the summer blockbusters are starting to come out. I just got back from Iron Man 3, one of the most highly anticipated movies of the year, and I didn't like it. No, I, d I did not like it. Um, uh, okay, um... Where should I start? I mean, I, I'm just, I, I know I'm always at a loss for words. You guys who follow me know that. This time I'm really lost for words because I didn't think it could get worse than Iron Man Two. I didn't like Iron Man Two at all. What I really like about superhero movies, I think, um, is this. It's pretty much what everyone thinks: the story, the hero, and the villain. That's what makes a good superhero movie. Have you have a strong hero, villain, and a strong story. We have a good hero in this. We have a mediocre story. And a really messed up villain. Okay, um, I... Iron Man 3, it takes place after the Avengers, and Tony Stark is having anxiety issues, which is one of the good, positive things I will give credit to to the ire this movie they tackle anxiety issues very well although i don't think they ever come up with a resolution because tony stark has anxiety issues in this and he's apparently i think this is how it works i got lost on this he puts something in his arms so that he can just jump into his suit that i think they did that they did that in avengers but i think he injects something so his suit can he could just fall into his suit, or his suit just assembles like they fly towards him and they just come together. Okay, uh, my question, and I'm sure someone in the comments will be able to explain this to me, because I've only read a few Iron Man comics. Um, how come the suit, like it, you see this in the tra trailer, it's not a spoiler, but I am going to get into spoilers. Why does the suit attach to Pepper Potts and not Tony there, when the when his house is being blown up? I mean, and how does she know what... Well, she, I mean, she doesn't know what to do, but th there's another part, part of the movie where someone gets the suit and they apparently know how to work it. Um, that would be um, the villain. Not the Mandarin, but, well, we'll get into that. So, Tony's still having anxiety issues about all the stuff that went down in Avengers. Meanwhile, um, this there's a terror, terrorist now known as the Mandarin who's just blowing stuff up around the country, just creating panic and terror. And for those of you who don't know, the Mandarin is basically Iron Man's arch enemy from the comics. He's known for having these ten rings which, that could do all these other things, which is kind of cool because if you, when you look at because when you remember the first movie, the group that Tony Stark, that the group that captured Tony Stark at the beginning of the movie of Iron Man was called the Ten Rings. So it was kind of hinted that maybe he would be in that one, but no. For some reason, the, everyone has a big deal. They're like, what's Tony going to do about this? What's Tony going to do? I don't think they necessarily said all this was like a lot of stuff was going down in America. They might have. I, I'm sure, well, he's addressing the President of the, of the United States. But I don't know, everyone is expecting Tony to be on the job. No one on the news is talking about S.H.I.E.L.D. No one is talking about, what about Captain America? Uh, they're all just going towards Tony. Tony, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And this this um, reporter goes up and says, hey, Tony, you going to kill him? And Tony, for whatever reason, I guess this is supposed to show his sense of courage. He's like, I'm not afraid of you. Here's my home address. Come and fight me if you want. If you, I bet you you won't. You're a coward. Okay. Um. I first off, I don't really see how Tony is connected with the Mandarin. Like, why would he have to say, "I'm not afraid of you"? Because nothing has really happened to Iron Man yet at this point. Second, it is stated earlier in the movie that Tony Stark is trying to protect. Pepper, Pepper Potts, from any danger at all. He's staying up late at night working on suits and stuff. He says he'll protect her. She's living with him. And Tony is just given 
the address to their house. And this is supposed to be a genius. Okay. Well, to be fair, um, she starts packing to get out of the house. Uh, I don't get why you would do that, Tony. But screw it. But of course they attack him. And his, as you see in the trailer, the house falls apart and everything. And Tony has... some For some reason, Jarvis, the computer... I know there was a reason for it, but I... He flies him all the way to... what. Tennessee, I think? I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm tired. I just got back from the movie. I don't know. If I'm wrong, just tell me. And I think they were originally going to go there because they were going to investigate um, a bombing that happened years ago. Okay, another part of the story is the, um, what is it called? The extremists? This guy named Killian, played by Guy Pierce, is trying, he's been experimenting on people, kind of like the superhuman soldier experiment making them tougher, and they can glow red, and they can breathe fire, apparently. And this all has to do with a big conspiracy, and I'm going to get into that just in a minute. I mean, this was kind of what my problem was with Iron Man 2, when we have a villain that's really cool, played by a really good actor, and then it the, turns out the, si the main villain is really this corporate executive. Like in Iron Man 2, that was, it was Justin Hammer and not Whiplash. We focused more on Justin Hammer instead of Whiplash. And in a sense, this is kind of better, but in the same way, you could argue it's also worse. Because, alright, I'm going to get into what the spoiler alert. This, I didn't know what to think when I saw this coming. The Mandarin? Kingsley. The Mandarin. Is not... The Mandarin. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go over this. The Mandarin is not the Mandarin. He is a British actor who is a stupid British actor. I don't even really remember what Kingsley's goal was. Like, I was... And I'm, I wasn't dozing off. I was literally trying to think, what is going on? What? And then Kingsley and Iron Man have the final fight because... Kings, because, um, I mean, not Kingsley, um, Guy Pearce and Iron Man, I don't even remember the character's name, Guy Pearce and Iron Man get into a fight, and Guy Pearce re just says, right before he dies, ironically, I'm the real Mandarin, because he has Chinese tattoos on him, and, but I thought, wow, just wow, this is what happens to Iron Man's greatest nemesis oh i i don't think the mandarin ever really had an a, a true origin like they probably just hinted at it the here or there but i knew he had the 10 rings for a reason they could do all this stuff so there's no point to him in being in this movie um and it kind of makes the whole subplot in the first movie with the 10 rings um band makes that completely pointless I was just sitting on my seat going, wow, just wow. Mandarin is just a stoner, apparently. I was, at least with Iron Man 2, I understood what was going on. And I'm usually, on, I usually, I can understand what's going on. In a, I always understand what's going on, what's going on in a comic book movie. But this, this just was, wasn't interesting. I was trying to follow along with it, but it just wasn't that interesting. I don't know really what to say. The acting was good otherwise. Um, Kingsley did his best with what he was given. I think he deserves be deserved better. When he was playing the Mandarin, he was terrified. He was not, not terrifying, but he was pretty good. Um, Guy Pierce is alright, but I'm annoyed with that we got another like corporate executive who is the real villain. Um... Downey Jr. was good. Gwyneth Paltrow was good. Um, and Stanley had his cameo there. Okay, another positive I'll give to the movie. Um, it has a good child actor. Usually, child actors are not that... You don't always get good child actors. 
This one is pretty good. The kid who's playing Harley, he kind of has this little bond with Robert Downey Jr. in this. He's okay. And what else would I like? Oh, the multiple Iron Man suits, which really makes you think about how much, to, how long does it take Tony to build these suits and how much he spends on each suit, how much money he spends on each suit. It was cool seeing all those different suits. Um, I, I'm pretty sure like that was the Hulkbuster that you saw at one point. They don't, they didn't call it that, but it looked like the Hulkbuster. And but Iron Patriot is in this movie, which is War Machine turned into Iron Patriot. But in the comics, Iron Patriot is Norman Osborn. So half the time I was waiting for um, Willem Dafoe or I forgot who's playing the new. Norman Osborn hit him to show up and saying, give me back my Iron Patriot suit, Rhodey. And like walking up to Rhodey and saying, give me my Iron, give me my Iron Patriot suit. Bad joke. Bad joke, too. I, I, I was really looking forward to this. But, my, you're not going to believe me, but I don't think my audience was really into it either. I'm not joking right here. One guy actually was asleep, snoring. I am dead serious. So, there wasn't even that much, that much of a crowd, and I don't understand because Iron Man is right, right, is bringing in tons of money, tons of it. But I had high hopes, and I get feels. Like, there's not going to be another good Iron Man movie. I mean, they just botched Iron Man's greatest nemesis. It wasn't really interesting. It kind of just felt... And it felt like a rehash, because it kind of always ends... Like the Spider-Man movies, it ends with Iron Man and having to save Pepper Potts. And it always ends at... And it ends always at night, him saving Pepper Potts, if you notice. It's weird. Well, technically, Pepper... Okay, Pepper actually does is of good use in this movie. She don't see Iron Man suit at one point. And another another time, she... She actually gets, gets the extremist drug in her system, and she manages to, like, beat up the Mandarin. Yeah, she's the one... I think she's the one who kills Mandarin. I don't know. So... There are my th thoughts on Iron Man 3. I saw that... I'm hoping Thor 2 is better. I still don't know what to expect from that trailer. But it looks a little bit... I don't want to say it looks more interesting. Because I was really, really looking forward to Iron Man 3. This is a big bummer for me. Out of There were three main... Three big... Um, three big summer blockbusters I wanted to see this year. Iron Man 3, Star Trek Into Darkness, and Man of Steel. And so far, one of them already sucks. Okay, I shouldn't say it sucks. It has some redeeming value. If you don't, if you're not a big hardcore comic book fan, but you like these movies, you'll probably like this. In fact, if, it's probably best if you're not a comic book fan and you watch this movie. Because then you will actually think that the Mandarin twist is kind of funny. Because it did get actually some laughter in my audience. But there are my thoughts on Iron Man 3. I was hoping for more. Here's hoping that Marvel... Oh yeah, and there is um, an end credits scene. There is. And it doesn't build up for like an Avengers 2. It's just like a little comedic relief thing. If you want me to say what it is. It's he... Iron Man talking to Hulk. Well, Bruce Banner. So... There are my thoughts on Iron Man 3. Take it for what it's worth. I'm give, giving this movie... Two Iron Man suits out of five. Thanks for watching. This is OMM signing out.